What's up, everybody, and welcome to The Horror Within Me, a podcast dedicated to the world of horror. I am your host, Eric, and each week I'm going to rate and review a new movie or TV show that falls within the horror genre. Now, this is a show for horror fans hosted by a horror fan who's just here to share my opinions and experiences with my fellow horror friends in hopes that you may gain something new to watch or not watch, and really just talk about all things related to this beautifully dark and spooky world that we call horror. So if this sounds like a show for you, stick around, we're going to have a lot of fun. So let's get started. Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back. I'm your host, Eric, and it is another spooky Sunday together. And this week's episode is all about the brand new 2022 film, Megan. Now, I want to stress right away that this is a spoiler-free review. We're going to talk about the new movie. I just got a chance to see it last weekend, and it did not disappoint me. But I'm going to get into a little bit more detail. We're going to go over a few of the you know, synopsis and the, all the fun facts about it and terrifying trivia and, you know, the same thing we do every week. Hope you guys are having a fun week. If you notice, I'm working on the studio that I'm recording in. I have a little bit, uh, try to get a little bit more in the background here. As you can see, not only horror in here, but there's some Nintendo and gaming things because I do like that old school vibe as well. But anyway, you had to, if you're in the horror universe, you've either seen Megan or you've heard about it. Even if you're not in the horror universe, Nine times out of ten, you've seen a trailer, you've heard about it. Megan is trending all over social media. She's like at Meet Megan on Twitter, who is – it's just hilarious. She's all over the place. So who is Megan, right? What is Megan? What is the movie? We're wasting no time. We're diving right in this week. So Megan is a 2022 film, and the synopsis is as follows from IMDb. A robotics engineer at a toy company – builds a lifelike doll that begins to take on a life of its own. It is directed by Gerard Johnston, who has directed Housebound and the Jaquai Brown Diaries. It's starring Allison Williams as Gemma. She was in Get Out, if you remember. And Violet McGraw as Caddy. Um, and then the Megan doll is played by um, Amy Donald. Written by Akila Cooper and a story by James Wan. We love James Wan and produced by Jason Blum of Blumhouse Productions. It doesn't get, you know, it's just funny that James Wan is the story about another doll because of the Annabelle whole thing. But Megan and Annabelle, two very different dolls. Like, I'll just put it this way. Like, if you can listen to the synopsis, you're pretty sure that you can get an understanding of what the movie Megan is about and what Annabelle is about. Annabelle actually doesn't move around as a doll. It's a doll that's hosting a demon that's usually there. So very different doll-like stories. The tagline for Megan is friendship. (laughs) Friendship has evolved. Now, take with that what you, what you will, but I can honestly say they ain't lying. Like, the way that they made this toy, they're not lying. We'll get into a little bit. Like as much that I can talk about without giving any spoilers away. Uh, it's categorized as a horror film, sci-fi, thriller. I like the sci-fi aspect. I think because she's a robot, it's definitely a sci-fi movie. Which, I don't know. I'm not a big sci-fi, but I, I guess... I don't know what it is about it. There's a stigma for me. I don't know why. But anyway, it's rated PG-13 and has a runtime of 102 minutes. You know, I did not know. Even after going to see the movie, I paid no attention to this rating. I didn't know. I just assumed that, you know, Blumhouse, horror movie. I don't know why I assumed it. It was going to be rated R. It's rated PG-13. And after seeing it and knowing after learning it was PG-13, after I've already witnessed the movie and and viewed it, I understand now a little bit about the PG-13 part of it and how it was rated PG-13 and not rated R. It makes a lot more sense to me. Um, So yeah, those are just on-paper facts about Megan. Before we get into the thick of it, because this is a fun episode. We got a lot to talk about. This is something that's trending right now. It was just released January 6th, which 
was the year anniversary of the insurrection. So I feel like there was a little shade there from uh, the whole team of like, you know, we're going to make this a better day and we're not going to talk about this. We're going to talk about Megan, but that's just my personal opinion and my personal thoughts. So before we dive all the way in, we're going to do our little thing that we always do, which is terrifying trivia. So here we go. This week's terrifying trivia question is related to the universe of dolls in horror movies. And the question is, what was the first doll horror movie? Meaning, what was the first horror movie to feature a killer or possessed type of doll? Stick around to the end of the show for me to give you the answer. Now, now that the formality is out of the way and you've got some time to sit and think about what the movie is, the first doll movie, we're going to dive into some Megan talk, okay? I was, <laughs> let's travel back in time for just a moment to when, I don't remember when the trailer was released and I probably should have looked this up in my notes and I'm looking at my notes and I didn't think of this. But now, talking about it, I want to travel back just a little bit in time to when we first get the trailer. I think it was sent to me on TikTok by my sister and I thought it was a joke because all I saw was the iconic hallway dancing scene. And if you know, you know. And I was like, this has got to be a joke. Like, I looked it up and I realized that it was a serious movie. Not only was it a serious movie, it was a movie, again, being produced by Blumhouse. If you're a fan of the show, then you already know that Blumhouse is my ultimate horror movie production company. I am obsessed with everything Blumhouse does. They're like, they can't do anything wrong. They can swing and miss, but it's never a full miss for me. So I love Jason Blum and everything he's created and honestly would just love to have some sort of job at Blumhouse just to have it on my resume. But, we're not going to dive into my career aspirations. We're going to talk about Megan. So I didn't realize that it was a real movie. So once I found out it was a real movie, I was instantly intrigued. And then the queer LGBTQI plus, QIA plus community, you know, we all started to really like dive into Megan as long as, as well as the horror community. But, you know, that dancing girl, we were feeling it. We were feeling it. We were feeling it. And she is a fucking gay icon now. Like, I can tell you this about the movie that isn't going to take away from anything. And you probably already guessed it. But motherfucking Megan is not afraid to read a bitch to filth. She is on point. I mean, I want to be her friend. Maybe not the, you know, the murderous part. But she will read you to filth. And she has got that slick mouth like me. I'm telling you, not always be proud, but in my younger years, I mean, I'm still, my mouth is still very slick, but in my younger years, I was less tame. And I, you know, I, 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 I would pop off the same way. Like I would, you know, I was just always told that, you know, I had a smart mouth and for a long time I, I took it as a compliment. I'm not so wild and ratchet now, but he's still there. And it will come out if you provoke it. Kind of like Megan. I'll leave it there. But uh, she she is this gay icon and I fucking love it. And the more, like the first week, I didn't go out for opening weekend. I had too many things going on. But me, my husband, Ryan, and Jenny, you all know Jenny. She was over and we were talking and he was like, let's go see Megan Sunday. And I'm like, fucking sold. So we bought the tickets and we went to go see Megan. And we were just so excited because, you know, the the week leading up, there were things all over Twitter, all over social media, TikTok, everything about Megan with Megan's marketing as well. And as being this movie, and then it was just blowing up and breaking box office. And I was feeling, you know, I was feeling left out. I was getting severe FOMO 
all my fellow TikTokers and you know the horror community and podcasters, everyone's talking and raving and saying their reviews and everything about Megan. And I had severe FOMO. I'm like, you know, one of my goals for my show this year was to do more current horror. I want to be involved in the trending conversations because I feel that I have something to contribute. We are all different. We all have different perspectives on the genre and the movies. And I want to be a part of the conversations now, as well as the conversations that have been going on for many years or decades. So one of the things was to go see movies that were coming out because I've never really been to the movies by myself. Thankfully, my husband was wanting to see this one. So we all kind of went together. It didn't disappoint. Um, I will say I'm not going to rave 100% and tell you that, you know, it's the best thing since sliced bread. What I will say is it was a slow start, if that makes sense, um, which I was a little surprised for. Um, The first 30, 20, 30 minutes, I don't know exactly how long, but I know I remember feeling like, where's Megan? It couldn't have been 30 minutes. It might have been. But I just, I was uh, unsure. Like there was a there was a decent story being told and building up to, you know, the different events that are going to occur. But I felt like there was a good 10 minutes worth of content that was irrelevant, if that makes sense. It just, it just felt slow to me. Um, so I could have done with a little bit more of that cut, but I'm not a producer or a director or whatever the fuck it is. Just as a viewer, it was a little slow for me. Um, maybe it's my attention span. The PG-13 rating definitely limited the uh, terrorizing, terrifying aspects that we could have seen from Megan and which left us with more of a smart mouthed, you know, murderous campy robot that we got, which again, no tea, no shade, Megan. I love you. I, I am obsessed with you. I just would have liked to have, had all the camp and and things that made her, but also have really gotten into the dark, dark realities of things that she was capable of. And I feel like that opportunity was missed. Um, But being that it's a PG 13 movie, I understand why now, Uh, you know, while I was in the theater, It's not, and I've heard other people say this, and you've probably heard other people say this as well. The movie itself isn't scary. It's very, um, you know, it's got terrifying elements, but it's definitely not a jump scare horror movie. I found myself laughing more than... I found myself terrified and I was able to quickly identify what would happen in the final act in the beginning of the first act. So the movie doesn't reinvent scary doll movies in any way, but it does bring it to the current world that we live in. So take with that as you will, because it's like I said, I'm trying very hard to to give you guys an understanding of the movie without ruining the movie. And I don't want my words now to to deter to deter you from going to see the movie in theaters. I think it's definitely a fun, fun theater experience, especially with other people. Um, like I said, me, Jenny, and Ryan we're laughing we were involved it is engrossing it is a great movie there is a scene that i will say a little bit of a spoiler part but i will say that there's a there's a scene so there's a neighbor next to the house of where the little girl and her aunt Gemma live with megan and there's a hole in the fence and 
they have a dog. The neighbor has a dog that's not very friendly. And one of the things that Megan can do is track things and look for things. She shows Megan she lost an arrow. And Megan is looking for the arrow for her. And it shows that it's in the neighbor's yard right through the hole in the fence. And what I will say is Megan goes over there to grab the arrow. And upon grabbing the arrow is attacked by the dog and the little girl screaming. And he's, you know, shaking her and doing all the things that vicious dogs do during an attack. Obviously she's not broken or anything like that. The attack is over. And the thing that I wanted to mention is that there's a picture and you may have seen it on something like a still, or maybe a part in a, in a clip or something. She's looking over the fence at the dog and the neighbor after the events are over. And <laughs> she is giving me full, 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 full psycho girl horror movie vibes. Like her hair is disheveled. She is a hot mess. And she is looking at them like, you done fucked up now and i'm not gonna say if she gets revenge or doesn't get revenge but it's a horror movie and it's a killer robotic dog so again take that as you will it is definitely um an image the the fashion of the little doll is also like funny like i said her being disheveled but then also she's got like this super nice coat and these glasses that she wears so if you follow me on tiktok or any of the socials i posted pictures of her and i'm like I'm obsessed with this. I'm obsessed with everything about her. She's just like, she's, oh, she is amazing. And, and on top of the fact that she's psycho, she's a dancer and she's a damn singer. This doll will like murder your enemies and then sing you a lullaby to go to fucking sleep. I don't know what other aspects you're looking for in a in a in a in a doll for a little girl in a in a horror movie like <laughs> the the singing is so random and unanticipated that when she, the first time the first time she sang in the movie my husband next to me i hear him just start laughing and i'm like st- like he finds it like funny again it's not laughing in a bad way it's laughing in a this isn't actually good like it's funny like she and she's not just humming like she's this girl this doll this robot is singing like full verses to this little girl out of nowhere like she's like okay katie time for bed and then starts singing like titanium literally and she is made of titanium so like i thought that part was hilarious again a little bit of spoilers but it's like it's not taking away from anything in the movie. Again, going into the movie, you're going in for this fun, crazy experience to meet Megan, basically be introduced to this this film of this this new doll that has its own quirks. Like if you look at Chucky and who he is now as compared to what he was introduced as, like the doll is the star. He's got his smart foul mouth, and everyone loves Chucky, right? Well, Megan is the female robot modern day version in its own way do you know what i mean it's not she's not fully psycho either but there's a connections do you know what i mean and there's reasonings behind it um definitely definitely worth going to the movies so before we get into my final actual rating of megan i want to go back and answer this week's terrifying trivia question So, again, the question for Terrifying Trivia was, what was the first doll horror movie? And the answer is The Great Gabo, which was released in 1929. The synopsis from IMDb is an insanely egocentric ventriloquist, even though he is possessed by his wooden dummy, is in love with a dancer who is in love with another. The dummy gives advice to the ventriloquist. Okay. I'm going to be honest. 
I didn't know the answer to this, but I wanted to know what it was. So I what is like, if I'm curious, I'm sure other people are curious on what the first movie was with the doll, right? And that we want to know. So I made it the terrifying trivia question. I don't know what that synopsis is, but I'm fucking sold. I, it sounds like, I don't, it sounds like a wild fucking ride. Like, is he's possessed by the dummy, but the dummy's giving him advice. And the guy is in love with someone who is in love with someone else. It is giving me passion soap opera from the 1990s with little Timmy and Tabitha. I don't fucking know. I am here for it. I'm going to find a way to fucking find this movie. And maybe it'll be a bonus episode on another platform or something that'll be do we'll do really quickly. We'll revisit some terrifying trivia and pick some of those contents. But I think it sounds fucking amazing. I don't know. Has anybody actually ever seen this movie from 1929? Because it is now 2023 and I don't fucking know. Never heard of it. But anyway, that was this week's terrifying trivia question. So let's get back and give our our final rating of the 2022. Megan movie. So I have to think about this because again, I've seen the movie one time and it was almost a week ago. So it's still fresh in my brain. What do I want to rate it and thinking about it and what I want to use to rate Megan. So obviously what I thought would be super fun for me because what the vibes I'm getting from Megan is, you know, very shady, very rigid to filth kind of robot queen um, I'm going to use sunglasses, you know, like shady, you know, sunglasses. And I'm going to give Megan a nine out of 10 sunglasses. And I'm going to explain to you why. Megan doesn't get a 10 out of 10 because I feel like it should have been pushed to rated R because I just want more. I want more darkness, more terror involved than I, and to balance out the campiness, like the fun of the movie is super fun and we can have all those elements still, but bring it darker. Like I want to be laughing and then I want to be looking like I want to feel terrified. Like this was funny, but this is also super fucking twisted now and, and, and out of left field. Like I didn't see that coming where I feel as though I saw where Megan was coming from and we knew from the beginning what it was going to be and we kind of could detail the entire story ourselves and I wanted a little bit more depth and and surprise behind it. So I give Megan the 9 out of 10. A little bit of news before we wrap up is that already within two weeks of Megan being released, they already announced a sequel, Megan 2.0, to be released in January of 2025. That means in two more years, there will be a sequel already to this iconic movie with the two girl stars already signed on to be returning, Gemma and Caddy. Katie. I don't know why I said Caddy. Ugh. Thinking of all the gay con- uh, cattiness. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so releasing in January of 2025. I'm so fucking excited about this. And like Megan, Jason Blum, whoever, I want to interview you guys about this movie, about this franchise that you were trying to build. I just really want to sit down and talk with you. I would fucking die if I had like a Megan on the other side of the screen to talk to. It would be fucking hilarious. Which, speaking of meeting and talking to Megan, Monster Mania Con is coming back to my area in New Jersey in March and I have my tickets and they've released some of the guests and the girl, Amy Donald, who played Megan is going to be there. So maybe I'll slip her my business card and be like, I know you're 12, like talk to your guardians and everything like that. But like, let's, let's figure out how to do it or just fly me out to wherever you're filming Megan 2.0 and have her take me out. I don't know. I just need to be involved. It'll never happen. My little gay heart can dream. But anyway, that's it for this week's episode of The Horror Within Me. Have fun, everybody. Bye. Thanks again for joining me on this week's episode of The Horror Within Me. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review wherever you listen to your podcast. And for even more Horror Within Me content, visit my link tree at linktr.ee slash horrorwithinme 
for links to the website, my Patreon, and all of my social channels to stay up to date on all the spooky stuff that we're doing. So be safe, and until next time, stay spooky.